Come on, guys. Is there really anything cooler than a 351 Cleveland? And when it comes to Cleveland, is there anything cooler than a 351 Cleveland sporting a dual quad tunnel ram? Hello, everybody. I'm Richard Holder, and it's time for some 351 Cleveland love. That's right. Check it out. <laughs> And see it. Before we do that, welcome to the channel. Please make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. I've got some testing today that checks off three very important boxes. One, Cleveland. Two, Stroker. Three, Tunnel Ram. That's right. All full of cleveland -y goodness. So let's check it out. Okay, guys, let's jump right in on our 351 Cleveland, <laughs> the forgotten Ford Warrior. You know, more guys talk about the Windsor stuff, I think, but the Cleveland won lots and lots of stuff all the way back in drag racing, NASCAR, all that stuff. So let's take a look at some modified Clevelands that I did over the years, including a Tunnel Ram Stroker version that I recently found the information on, so I wanted to get this out here. But we're going to start off with our base motor, and in this case, it was a 1970 M Code 351. Cleveland, so meaning it had a hydraulic flat tappet camshaft, but it also had 11 to 1. It had four V heads with an, I think that this one had a non adjustable valve train because it had the, um, because it had the hydraulic flat tappet camshaft in it. It had a 4V four barrel intake manifold, and I ran a Holly carburetor on this, a 750 Holly on this. And as long as we had enough, um, gaskets on this the hollywood work on the on the 4v factory cleveland this was a cast iron intake manifold we ran it with long jeep headers inch and seven eighths uh, mustang headers uh, you know early mustang headers with collector extensions on it we ran it with a factory camshaft factory compression all that stuff and so this thing did fairly well i was very surprised when we ran most of these cleveland headed deals including this one even this m code motor did very well they made more power than their chevy equivalents Primarily because you have such good head flow. I mean, you get a, a fuely head that flows 200 CFM or something like that, 200, 210 CFM. These flow 275. So there's just no contest. And this thing had enough camshaft in it, although we're going to step up in camshaft when we go to the boss motor. But run in, run basically this stock 1970 M code 351, produced 358, 59 horsepower, you know, right near 360 horsepower. Torque was very good, 372 foot pounds of torque. So it did very well for basically your kind of bone stock motor with headers and this thing would have originally come with a four barrel. But here's what happened when we also ran a 1971 Boss 351. So very similar, uh, 11 to 1. This thing had 4V heads with adjustable valve train. It had a solid uh, flat tappet camshaft on it with adjustable valve train on it. We ran it with the same intake manifold. This one would have had a dedicated Boss 351 intake manifold and an Autolite carburetor. I didn't have that intake manifold, but I'm told by most of the people that I reached out to, like guys from Holman and Moody and stuff, that I reached out to that did supply the Boss 302 intake manifold. Thank you, guys, for that. But I'm told by most of the guys that the performance difference between the aluminum intake manifold and the cast iron intake manifold is very, very minimal. I personally haven't done, done that exact test, but we ran it with the same 50 Holly, the long tube headers and stuff, but the Boss motor did quite a bit better. It has a bigger camshaft, even though it's a, it's a solid lifter camshaft, but it has about 20 degrees or so, or 20 thousandths, or, four, or I, I take that back, about 40 thousandths more lift, and the difference is about 24 degrees of duration, um, advertised duration. So the solid camshaft is bigger, even though if we subtract the lash from that, but on our basically stock Boss 351, it made 383 horsepower. So it did very well. Torque was up quite a bit, 390 foot pounds of torque. The Boss 351 so far is the most powerful factory small block style, you know, muscle car intake or muscle car small block that I tested. I tested lots of Chevys and stuff, and but the Boss with the good head 351, lots of compression, it did very well. But now let's take a look and see what happens when we started modifying this, and then we stepped all the way up to a 408 Tunnel Ram Stroker. Okay, now it's time to take a look at what happens when we modify our 351 Cleveland. And actually, we could have started from either the M-Code 351 or the Boss 351. Since they're sharing basically the same, like, oh, let's call it the, <laughs> the same long block. They have the same block and crank and rods and pistons because they have the same static compression ratio. They, they could have used the same cylinder head. Basically, we have a um, closed chamber 4V head. One of them had... 
non-adjustable valve train and the other one had adjustable valve train but since we're putting a hydraulic flat tap at camshaft in you could really use it with either setup and we used it with an adjustable valve train because we already had that on the boss 351 so now let's take a look and see what what happens when we modify it so this was our m code i had listed as a cobra jet it's actually not a cobra jet um this was our so this is our boss version, but now I'm going to show you what happened when we did a modified version. And basically what we did was change and upgrade the camshaft. And then we also upgraded the intake manifold. And oddly enough, when we talk about the intake manifold, I'm going to show you the intake manifold, the port, <laughs> the ports at least on the Edelbrock manifold are actually smaller than the four of you one. So we went smaller in port cross section, but we picked up a lot of power. So it's pretty good stuff. So now let's take a look. Here's our modified version. You can see, we'll get to the power numbers first. Peak power was 450 horsepower. Peak torque checked in at 411, 411 to 12 foot pounds of torque. And geez, take a look at the torque curve. First of all, the torque curve nice and flat from below 4,000 RPM all the way out past 5,000 RPM. So a nice flat torque curve. <clears throat> we picked up a lot of power. We picked up power from, depending on which one you compare it to, from about 3,400 all the way out. So anywhere where you'd be using this for like performance applications, <coughs> excuse me, because you'd be running out to 6,500 and shifting. So it only dropped down to about 4,500 RPM. So you'd be using a lot of this, but let's talk about what modifications we made to pick up this power. So take a look at our test description here on our modified version. And we had a, um, first thing we did was, as I said, we replaced the factory cast iron uh, 4V intake manifold for the Cleveland with an Edelbrock RPM air gap intake manifold. And you take a look at this cross section, you could see a comparison between the port volume and the stock 4V basically gasket. You could see, hey, this is a big difference in port volume, but the dual plane RPM air gap is no joke. It, it worked very, very well. We combined that with the same 750 Holly that we had run previously on the stock intake manifold, but we also changed the camshaft. We removed, since we could have started with either the, the M-code uh, hydraulic flat tap to cam or the solid lifter boss camshaft, we removed those camshafts essentially and put in an Extreme Energy 284, which is I think the biggest of their shelf offerings for the Extreme Energy line in the hydraulic flat tap stuff. So again, hydraulic flat tap it uh, camshaft and not a solid camshaft. This camshaft was a 584-588 lift. You can take, take a look <laughs> back behind me. Um, uh, so, so fairly good lift, you know, getting close to 600 lift. It was a 240-246 degree duration split, you know, healthy amount of a uh, healthy amount of duration and 110 degree lobe separation angle. And this was a much more modern camshaft than, you know, let's face it, the, the M code camshaft or the Boss 351 camshaft. You know, this was all the way back designed in the 60s. And in the case of the Boss, you know, 71, 70, 71. So these were old style camshafts and factory versions. And when they picked the camshaft for a factory combination, even a performance application like they did here, obviously they have a lot more than just power production in mind. They have longevity and what springs they can use and all that stuff. And they want to make sure, you know, it's a good combination and it's going to last long because obviously they don't want warranty issues. But by upgrading the camshaft to our comp cam and upgrading the intake manifold to our RPM air gap manifold, we picked up quite a bit of power. As I said, we went compared to the Boss 350, we went from 382 to 450 and all the way from 358 to 450 if you compare it to the M code motor. So now let's take a look at our, what happens when we stepped up in displacement to a 408 stroker Cleveland. And then we also added ported heads and a tunnel ram. So let's check it out. Okay, now we're gonna take a look at what happens when we you know, step up from the stock displacement to a stroker with a tunnel ram. And we can <laughs> kind of see it right here. But let's take a look and see what happened. Uh, this, uh, to remind you, this is our 450 horsepower modified 351 Cleveland. It had the Edelbrock intake manifold and the, you know, the bigger 284 comp cam. Had the stock um, 4V Cleveland heads, you know, 450 horsepower, 411 horsepower, or 411 foot pounds of torque. We'll go ahead and bring the, our stroker Cleveland up you can see yeah big power <laughs> and everything about it was better than the, than the stock displacement motor so this thing made 500 just right off the bat 574 horsepower out here near 6500 rpm and 512 foot pounds of torque to pick up like almost a, or a little bit 513 foot pounds over 100 uh 
100 foot-pounds of torque and more than 100 horsepower. But how did we do that? How did we get our Cleveland to make an awful lot more power? And the first thing we do is step up in displacement. So we went from 351 cubic inches or thereabouts because I think that that motor was originally 30 over because it's really hard to find a Cleveland block that would be a standard bore block anymore unless you were able to find someone one that was brand new which we didn't do we used we had a used block that we got from a wrecking yard that turned out to be 30 over so same thing with this 408 this is the 408 stroker and the stroker kit way back came from the guys at Coast High Performance and it was the same thing that you see it was a Cleveland version of a very popular 408 Windsor combination so we have a four inch stroke crank the the block was bored 30 over so the combination of a four inch stroke and a 403 bore 408 cubic inches this one actually was slightly less compression than our previous 351 this was 10.6 to 10.7 is what it calculated out but we didn't need the extra compression really for this combination this was going to be more of a streetable build for for the guy that the, the, this was actually going in a vehicle and they just wanted the thing to be like super torquey and have the ability to take advantage of all the power offered by a 4V Cleveland head. And in this case, it was more than just a stock 4V Cleveland head. These particular heads were ported by the guys at Ford Performance Solutions way back in the day. And this combination was put together with the ported heads. They were milled slightly because they did a little bit of chamber work to to keep the the chamber size stock. It had it had the stock valve sizes, but again, you know, thorough porting. And I think that these things flowed uh, a good bit over 300 cfm. If I remember right, they were in the 330 range um, in terms of flow, so they did they did fairly well. Uh, to improve power, obviously, obviously, we went up in displacement and a ported head, which made a big a big difference. But we also the or the the builder actually changed the camshaft because this wasn't the motor that I put together. But the camshaft was a, a retrofit hydraulic roller camshaft and not a flat tappet, either a solid or a hydraulic flat tappet. It was a um, it was from the guys at Crane did it originally. This was a 612 620 lift. So again even more able to take advantage of the added airflow offered by the Port of Cleveland head. It was a 249, 253 degree duration at 50 and 110 degree lobe separation angle. Hydraulic roller lifters, obviously they had to change the valve train, the, the push rod length and stuff to work with the hydraulic roller stuff. But the other cool thing is what, <laughs> you know, obviously a stroker Cleveland is a good Port of Cleveland heads, a retrofit hydraulic roller cam, obviously good. But what really made this thing super cool, in, in my opinion, is the fact that it's run with a tunnel ram. So this was run with a YN tunnel ram. The tunnel ram was actually port matched to the ported heads, not not ported throughout, just port matched, uh, you know, at like a one inch from the entry of the port or from the transition from the intake port to the cylinder head port. And it was run with two 750 Mighty Demons back in the day. This thing had a, an MSD distributor. It also had a set of um, Comp 173 roller rockers on it to work with the Cleveland heads and stuff. And all this combination put together after uh, dialing in the timing and the airfield, the jetting on the carburetors. It didn't actually take too much jetting. The carburetors out of the box worked fairly well. I think we only changed the, we had to go down in jet size actually. We changed the jetting, I think it was three or four jets, both on the primary, on the secondary side. And once we did, we got this kind of curve. You could see the thing ran flawlessly. It had plenty of valve spring in it to run this thing out with the hydraulic roller cam. And this thing ran smooth all the way out to 67 or 6800 rpm but made peak power 574 horsepower at 6500 and peak torque occurred at 5000 rpm although it was very close at 5100 as well so a good combination so it just goes to show you when you combine all the head flow of Cleveland, especially a port of Cleveland head, you know, a good camshaft and a cool tunnel ram intake. There's nothing better than a tunnel ram Cleveland. I'm Richard Holder. Please make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. And I'll keep testing.